the reason for my depression, the reason for this feeling of blah about life. I don't feel like doing anything. What's the point? Where am I? What what am I doing here? What do you want from me? That feeling of like just blah that comes with depression. I was able to see that I felt that way because I think every single person at some point in their lives experiences depression. For some people, the depression might be very short period of time or for some people maybe that depression can be a very long period of time maybe their whole lives for some people the depression is really on the surface they're outwardly acknowledging that they're depressed but for other people their depression may be hidden underneath the surface without them realizing it so in this video i'm going to be sharing my story of when i was experiencing depression when I was going through my depressed times, I didn't realize that it was depression because I was one of those people who, who grew up in an environment where I had to perform. Uh, I'm the first child of three and my parents, they were very strict about academics. They wanted me to do well in school. So I really was trained from a young age to perform at a very high level. Looking back now, I realized that for most of my school life, I was very depressed. But I didn't know that I was depressed because I was one of those highly functioning depressed people. So what that means is that inside, I was going through the similar things that other people who are depressed were going through, but on the surface, you would have never known because I was doing all the things that looked normal on the outside. The depression that I've been stuffing inside and avoiding it was there because, you know, a big part of me, like I knew I wasn't happy, but I didn't know why. At least if I knew what the problem was, if I knew what I needed to do to fix it, I could fix it. But since I didn't know what this unexplainable feeling of like, I'm doing all the right things, but something's just off and I'm bending over backwards to, to prove something to myself, but it just didn't feel right. So for most of my life, as long as I can remember, I wasn't really happy. There was one defining moment in my life where I can remember that I saw my depression come out to the surface. For most of my life, I didn't know why I was feeling the way I was feeling. Now for me, I grew up in a very strict Asian household where my parents expected very, very high academics and high everything of me. To give you an idea of what my life was like, I was in all AP classes in high school. I was playing volleyball and Throughout elementary and middle school, I was in orchestra, I played violin, I was in band, I played clarinet, I was in like SAT schools, I was in all these after school programs, I was playing club volleyball and so many things, so, so many things. And I realized looking back on it, I didn't really do that because I wanted to. When I look back on why I did all of that, I see that what really drove me most of my life was I was so, so afraid of disappointing the people that I loved, especially my parents. Because I'm the firstborn child of three kids, and so, I don't know, maybe it's like a first child thing, but we take it on our shoulders to be like the model child, you know, the one that kind of paves the road for the siblings and the one that sets an example for the siblings. So I took on this huge burden on my own to be like the perfect child specimen. So I did all these things that were unnatural, meaning it wasn't true to me. I bent over backwards because I didn't want to disappoint my parents. I didn't want to disappoint my friends. I didn't want to look like a failure in front of the people that I wanted the most recognition from. So that's what drove me for most of my school life. 
the desire to please teachers, the desire to please my parents, the desire to please my friends. I was pleasing everybody else, looking everywhere else for approval, except for my own self. And so because of that, every day at the end of the day, no matter what I did, I came home feeling empty. I came home feeling hopeless. I came home feeling so sad and lonely because it was like, yeah, I was getting A's in school, so what? Yeah, I was playing volleyball, so what? Yeah, I was in orchestra, so what? I had so many of these so what's. Why does it matter? I was not happy, I was angry, I didn't like myself, I didn't like my life. So what? For all of these things that I was doing. So that one defining moment that made me realize how depressed I was was when I got my college acceptance letters. So any person who went through any kind of school system knows that, you know, when you're 18 or when you're going through the school system, the climax of your academic career as a student in elementary, middle school, and high school is the university that you go to. At least in my house, in my culture, I grew up believing that the climax of my life and what really ultimately determined my future health, happiness, success, peace, prosperity was what college I went to and what grades I got that led to the decision of what college I went to. All I wanted in my life, all these things that I did, all I wanted was I wanted to go to UCLA. I wanted to go to UCLA, I wanted to be a lawyer, and that was it. That was my idea of what I was working so hard for. And I remember the day when all those acceptance and rejectance letters came, and I saw the one from UCLA, and it was a small envelope. You can tell by like the type of envelope your letter comes in, whether you're accepted or rejected. If you're accepted, it's like a nice big envelope with like your welcome packet, congratulations, all that stuff. But if you're rejected, it's like a small standard letter that says, thank you for applying, but we have to pass on your acceptance kind of thing. So you can tell right away from the mailbox if you're accepted or rejected. And my heart, dropped to the floor. I was hoping that it was maybe UCLA's acceptance was a small envelope, but in my gut, I knew that this was a rejectance letter, but my head couldn't understand why or how this was happening. So with like a trembling, you know, hand, I like ripped open the letter and I, I was like, this, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. But I opened the letter up and to my disbelief, I was rejected. And that made me feel like complete dirt. I felt so worthless at that moment. I felt so much shame. I felt so much guilt. I felt like I, I wanted to crawl in a hole and never come out. But you know what hurt more than the rejectance letter was my parents' facial expressions after I told them I didn't get into UCLA. Now remember, I lived my whole life with this fear of disappointing my parents, disappointing my family, and disappointing my friends. I would rather have broken my arm, popped off my left eyeball, pulled out all my hair, and twisted my, my body backwards than to disappoint the people I loved. That's how big that fear was. But my worst nightmare was coming true. When I told my dad especially, he was, he didn't say anything. I mean, how could you? It's not my fault that I didn't get in. He didn't say anything. But he had this look of utter disappointment, utter shock, and utter like disbelief that this was happening. And that is what hurt more than anything else. I did everything my parents told me. I did everything my teachers told me. I did everything that society told me, despite what I wanted, because I didn't want to see the look of disappointment on my parents. But it was happening anyway. I did so many things to avoid this moment, 
but it came anyway. And that was when I basically just lost it. <laughs> I basically just lost it. And then it's something inside, I can't really pinpoint it, something inside, some floodgates opened up inside of me that flooded this anger, sadness, depression, loss of motivation, everything onwards afterwards. So I ended up going to UC San Diego and my first, first year, I was so depressed. I was so resentful. I did not want to be there. This was not the school I wanted. This is not the life that I wanted. But I felt like I was stuck because it's, it's kind of like when you tell someone that you like them and then they say, no, you're not good enough. I don't like you. That's what it felt. I told UCLA I like them, but they said, no, you're not good enough. And now I had to settle for some other person that I didn't really like, but I'll just deal with you anyway because I have to choose somebody. That's what it felt like. But now in retrospect, I think everything happened exactly so perfectly because the experiences that I had in San Diego, I could not have had those experiences if I stayed home in LA. And actually not getting what I wanted drove me, instead of looking outside, it encouraged me to look inward. Because an interesting thing throughout the whole experience that I learned was the reason for my depression the reason for this feeling of blah about life. I don't feel like doing anything. What's the point? Where am I? What, what am I doing here? What do you want from me? That feeling of like just blah that comes with depression. I was able to see that I felt that way because I let everybody else in my life tell me how to live my life. I let everybody else, my family, friends, um, people I love, teachers, I let everybody around me tell me what, I, what classes I should take. I let them tell me what extracurriculars I should do. I let them tell, tell me what kind of feelings I should have, what kind of backpacks and notebooks and things I should buy. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what I liked. I didn't know what I wanted for my life and I didn't know what I was really good at. I didn't know what I was proud of in myself. I found my own self-worth by what other people were telling me. I kept doing the things that my parents said, oh good job, you should do this. So I let everybody write my life story and that is ultimately what I can see led to my depression. Anybody else that is pulling your awareness outside of you, telling you how to live, instead of you figuring out, wait a minute, instead of chasing what people are telling me I should, or instead of doing what people are telling me is good for me, what do I like to do? What do I want? Where do I want my life to go? Where do I see myself going? Those are very important questions that will help you grab a proactive hold in your life. So ironically, life has a way of knowing exactly what it is that you need. I actually have a tattoo right here in Latin. It says, you always get what you need. And I kind of got it after I didn't get into the school that I wanted. So it's not always you get what you want. You don't always get what you want, but you get always what you need. So if you're feeling depressed, know that letting other people tell you how to live and letting other people make decisions for you is the fastest shortcut to depression and unhappiness. Don't let anybody else tell you how to live your life without you first filtering their advice through your own common sense, asking myself what it is that I want. Do I want this? Do I not want this? Since I was a people pleaser, I would always say yes, 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 yes. And I thought that was the right thing to do. I thought that's what would make people like me. But saying yes, yes, yes to everybody else was what brought me to this unhappy, depressed state. 
we always have the power to say no. So for anyone out there who is feeling depressed, maybe you're an outward depressed person where you know you're depressed, or maybe you're a highly functioning depressed person like I was, doing all the things that a normal person does but on the inside dying, ask yourself, am I writing my life story right now? Or am I letting other people write my story for me? So if you have a story about depression, if depression is something you went through or are still going through, if there's some parts of my story that resonate with you, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your story.